It has been West's habit to destroy anything that might challenge it in the future. That's why whenever a country rises and becomes independent in a true sense, the West tries to bring conflicts into it. It thinks that doing so will create disturbance, opening a door for the West's intervention. Well, history has shown this as we saw in the case of Saddam Hussein, the powerful Iraqi leader, and Muammar Gaddafi, the president of Libya. Now, the president of Burkina Faso, Captain Ibrahim Traor, is doing the unimaginable, not only challenging the West, but doing more than that. He is forging ties with countries that are rivals to the West, doing arm deals with them, including North Korea. That's when the fear increases on both sides, as was done with Thomas Sankara, Burkina Faso's revolutionary leader. People in Africa fear that the West might be plotting against Captain Ibrahim. But what is he doing that makes him more of a threat than Thomas Sankara for the West? Let's know about that in this video. Captain Ibrahim Traore has set on a mission to change the fate of his country. He has vowed to do something that should have been done years ago, that is to make his country more powerful. In recent developments, he is implementing strategies that mirror the vision of his predecessor, Thomas Sankara. However, as history is the witness, Sankara was tragically assassinated for his efforts to distance Burkina Faso from Western dominance and foster new relationships with non-Western nations. President Traoré's goal is to lead Burkina Faso toward prosperity, autonomy, and strength by maximizing its resources and reducing Western influence. President Traoré's intentions to limit Western access to the country's natural resources at a higher cost have raised concerns and drawn comparisons to Sankara's fate. However, Traoré is going beyond Sankara's plans, challenging and confronting the West by forming alliances with countries considered adversaries by Western powers. This bold approach has cast Traoré as a daring and fearless leader in Africa. This new strategy is not only genius, but quite effective in itself. Instead of just challenging the Western powers, without having a buffer, Traor has chosen to be around his most powerful friends. In this way, not only is he untouchable, but is giving an open message that Burkina Faso will ally with countries, irrespective of what the West thinks about them. A recent development that has unsettled Western powers involves a delegation from Russia engaging in discussions with Burkina Faso's interim president, Ibrahim Traoré. The talks, confirmed by Burkina Faso's presidency, focused on potential military cooperation. The Russian delegation, led by Deputy Defense Minister Yunus Bekyov, followed up on President Traoré's previous discussions with Russian President Vladimir Putin during the Russia-Africa summit in St. Petersburg last July. These recent events have caused unease among Western powers who are reportedly exploring ways to replace and potentially remove President Traor, much like the fates of Thomas Sankara and Muammar Gaddafi. The West views President Traor's actions as a threat, and his engagement with Russia has exacerbated tensions. The situation in Burkina Faso remains tense, with the West closely monitoring the country's actions and alliances. This military cooperation with Russia means that Burkina Faso's military will be doing joint training with the Russian military. In other words, the influence which France used to have due to training Burkina Faso's soldiers will stay no more. Earlier, it was believed that French hold in military training also risked loyalty, because the majority of soldiers used to learn the French language, culture, and way of life. But now, the recent developments in Burkina Faso have highlighted the country's relations with Moscow, particularly following the expulsion of French troops earlier this year. This move has sparked speculation about deepening security cooperation with Russia, perceived as an adversary of the West. By aligning directly with Russia, Burkina Faso is challenging the West and conveying a clear message that it will select allies based on the benefits they offer rather than solely on their position towards the West. The West's tendency to anticipate that every country will view its adversaries as their own can be traced back to historical and geopolitical factors as well as the enduring patterns of alliances and partnerships that have defined global politics. Throughout history, Western powers have operated within a framework that emphasizes aligning the interests of like-minded nations, especially during times of global conflicts and power struggles. This perspective has been bolstered 
by various geopolitical and security alliances, such as NATO and regional defense agreements, which were established to counter perceived threats from opposing ideologies or hostile nations, particularly during the Cold War and beyond. Furthermore, the notion of standing in solidarity against shared adversaries within the West can be linked to the historical legacies of colonialism and imperialism, where European powers aim to expand their influence and dominance in different regions worldwide. This history has significantly influenced the Western viewpoint on international relations, fostering a belief in the necessity of presenting a united front against any potential challenges to their interests and principles. Additionally, the West's anticipation of collective animosity towards its adversaries is reinforced by its own foreign policy goals, which often prioritize safeguarding its strategic interests and security within the global context. It simply expects other countries to sacrifice their national interests for the West's national interests. You see, the West feels entitled to be supported, but when countries don't, the West uses force. This can materialize through diplomatic pressure, economic sanctions, or military interventions designed to curb or eliminate perceived threats to Western influence and stability. In this light, the expectation for other nations to align with the West's position on adversaries is regarded as crucial for maintaining a unified front and ensuring the safeguarding of shared values and security interests. Nevertheless, this expectation can pose difficulties for countries that prioritize their own national interests and pursue independent foreign policies that may not necessarily correspond with the West's agenda. It can lead to tensions, disagreements, and conflicts between the West and these countries, particularly when their differing interests and priorities come into play. Now, Burkina Faso's move to diversify its alias is being seen as something incoherent with the West's policies. But Ibrahim Traore simply doesn't care. The meeting between Burkina Faso and the Russian delegation emphasized areas of cooperation, with a strong emphasis on military aspects. This has raised concerns among Western powers, who fear potential collaboration in the military sphere. While the discussions included the training of Burkina Bay officer cadets and officers at various levels, including the possibility of pilot training in Russia, the official statement did not explicitly mention whether Russian military trainers would be sent to Burkina Faso. Traditionally, most of Burkina Faso's soldiers received training from institutions established by France, which wielded significant influence. With Russia entering the scene, the dynamics are expected to shift. President Traore's regime has encountered substantial challenges since assuming office in October 2022, primarily grappling with an upsurge in jihadist attacks. These challenges have underscored the necessity for Burkina Faso to explore new partnerships and seek support from countries like Russia. The situation remains complex and will continue to evolve as Burkina Faso charts its course forward in the face of security threats and geopolitical complexities. Amid the security troubles faced by Burkina Faso, President Ibrahim Traore looked to Russia for assistance, acquiring weapons and attack helicopters back in March. The latest military talks are now mainly revolving around establishing fresh economic and military pacts aimed at aiding Burkina Faso's fight against terrorism with active cooperation from Moscow. Speculations about undisclosed deals facilitating Russia's bypassing of international sanctions, particularly after it diverged from European markets, have also been stirred by these diplomatic discussions. The objective of these talks is to find solutions for Burkina Faso's security and development while reinforcing the mutually beneficial alliance with Russia. There's a hint of potential covert agreements prioritizing a win-win strategy, allowing both nations to gain advantages while sidelining Western powers. This explains President Ibrahim Traore's official acknowledgement of Russia as Burkina Faso's strategic partner, conveying a clear message to the West that Burkina Faso will engage and strike deals with Russia irrespective of initial calls to denounce Russia's involvement in the Ukraine conflict. Forging ties with Russia is an open manifestation of Burkina Faso's independent foreign policy. It says that not only will it not condemn Russia, but it will also forge ties, making secret deals that are sufficient to make the West nervous. Worries about Burkina Faso's ties with Moscow 
have grown alongside increasing anti-French sentiments in certain regions. In February, Burkina Faso expelled French troops and terminated an agreement that had granted France the authority to combat armed groups in the country since 2013. During a televised interview, President Trauer was probed about Burkina Faso's global allies in the ongoing conflict. He responded by stating that the French army's departure didn't indicate the end of France as an ally. Burkina Faso has strategic allies and seeks new forms of cooperation. One such strategic ally is Russia. President Traoré's statements highlighted Burkina Faso's stancy, which focuses on engaging with multiple countries rather than aligning with one faction. That's literally marvelous. Earlier, after Thomas Sankara, Burkina Faso has been under the influence of one country only, France. This made it miss the opportunity to establish close ties with any other non-West country, making Burkina Faso more dependent on France. But this new approach reflects a policy that African nations desperately need. President Traore expressed satisfaction with the collaboration with Russia and emphasized his country's readiness to work with all nations. This has triggered concerns among Western nations about Russia's increasing influence in the Sahel and neighboring regions. Here's a reminder to please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on black culture, history, civilization, and identity. Let's continue now. France's withdrawal of troops from Mali last year, following cooperation with the Russian military contractor Wagner Group to tackle armed groups, underscores the unease felt by Western countries when African nations engage with Russia. Nonetheless, President Traoré remains fixed on what's best for Burkina Faso, brushing off the approval of the West. Consequently, Burkina Faso's military leaders have inked an agreement with Russia to construct a nuclear power plant, reinforcing the country's power supply. This scenario sheds light on the changing dynamics in global relations and the priorities of African countries in pursuing partnerships that serve their interests. Burkina Faso's recent alignment with Russia has drawn attention in the international arena. Since taking office last year, President Ibrahim Traoré has turned to various other countries for economic and military aid, seeking their backing in addressing critical challenges faced by Burkina Faso. One notable move is Burkina Faso's plan to set up a nuclear power plant with Russia's support. President Traor emphasized the country's energy needs and the importance of achieving 95% electricity access in urban areas and 50% in rural areas by 2030. While this agreement has raised concerns in the West about the potential sharing of nuclear secrets, the main goal remains to meet Burkina Faso's energy needs and contribute to regional energy stability. Russia's involvement in nuclear power projects across Africa goes beyond Burkina Faso. The country has been assisting Egypt in building a nuclear power plant, and a similar deal was made with Kenya. Despite progress in energy accessibility in sub-Saharan Africa, the rates of electrification remain low, with over 50% of the population lacking access to electricity. Nuclear power is seen as a potential solution to address this energy shortfall. Besides Russia, President Traoré has established diplomatic relations with North Korea, expressing Burkina Faso's interest in acquiring additional weapons. He believes that, like Russia, North Korea can play a vital role in enhancing Burkina Faso's security and overall development. The country's military still relies on weapons received from North Korea dating back to 1985. Renewing diplomatic ties and potentially engaging in the arms trade with North Korea is seen as a display of Burkina Faso's pursuit of independent alliances, despite opposition from the West. Despite these alliances raising concerns in the West, President Traoré remains dedicated to what he believes is best for Burkina Faso's security and development. The consequences of these partnerships and the potential for further cooperation will undoubtedly shape Burkina Faso's direction in the years to come. This agreement marks a significant moment in the relationship between Burkina Faso and North Korea. Nearly 50 years ago, Burkina Faso's former leader, Thomas Sankara, visited North Korea and received a pistol as a gift. Now Burkina Faso's current military leader, Ibrahim Traoré, often compared to Sankara by his supporters, advocates for strategic alliances with countries such as Russia, Turkey, and North Korea. Traoré emphasizes that Burkina Faso's interests take precedence, regardless of the ally or nation involved. 
the country prioritizes cooperation with those capable of supporting them in their ongoing battle against extremist groups and providing the necessary equipment and assistance. However, it's essential to note that UN Resolution 2270 explicitly prohibits arms trading with North Korea. While the methods by which Burkina Faso intends to import weapons from North Korea are unclear, this step sends a clear message that Burkina Faso asserts its independence and the freedom to choose its own path. Not only that but as Western countries do not always comply with international law, but do as they please, Burkina Faso will do the same. Instead of following resolutions that are non-binding and serve only Western interests, Burkina Faso will think about its own interests and take radical steps. African countries like Burkina Faso have the right to shape their foreign policy independently. They have the freedom to choose allies and partnerships based on their national interests. This essence of sovereignty means they are not subject to external influences or control when defining their foreign policy. Traore's approach challenges the historical pattern of African leaders aligning with the West and prioritizing the West's interests over their own. He aims to make Burkina Faso an independent country with the authority to decide for itself and diversify its alliances. This shift can be seen as a setback to Western arms manufacturers profiting from the global arms trade. However, Traore understands the challenges he faces in pursuing this path, as shown by the fate of Thomas Sankara, who was assassinated. Sankara's vision for Burkina Faso, a nation with over 20 million people, could have put the country on a significantly different developmental trajectory. Traor seeks to revive Sankara's legacy and make Burkina Faso a truly independent and self-determined nation. However, he will be doing so after learning from the assassination of Thomas Sankara and giving the West no weak spot. Captain Ibrahim Traore, mindful of the history of powerful heads of state being assassinated, understands the need to consolidate power and ensure his own survival to bring about radical changes. After seizing power through a coup about a year ago, Traore announced that elections were no longer the top priority compared to the urgent issue of security. He plans to amend the country's constitution to better represent the interests of the masses. Traore emphasizes that security is of utmost concern for Burkina Faso due to ongoing jihadist violence. Initially, Traore aimed to strengthen security within two to three months of taking office. However, a year later, the country continues to grapple with jihadist attacks, emphasizing the importance of addressing security challenges. Traore's long-term plans involve making his country economically robust in Africa, so that presidents do not have to rely on selling their loyalty to the West. He wants to tackle the paradox of Africa's richness in natural resources, but enduring economic poverty. Africa possesses approximately 30% of the world's mineral reserves and 40% of its gold. However, it remains one of the poorest continents. This dilemma is known as the resource curse, where countries rich in natural resources tend to perform poorly. Now, Ibrahim Traore plans to change the very habit the West has been preserving for decades. The perception of non-Western leaders as threats when they gain power is deeply embedded in the historical context of global power dynamics and international relations. The global system, largely influenced by the actions and interests of dominant Western nations, has historically favored a specific global structure that serves Western economic, political, and strategic goals. Consequently, leaders from non-Western countries who challenge this structure or strive for their own independent paths often encounter opposition and hostility from Western powers. A crucial aspect of this argument revolves around the concept of threat perception. Non-Western leaders who exhibit strong independence, challenge Western supremacy, or pursue policies that diverge from Western interests are frequently viewed as potential threats to the existing global order. Now, the West has to be comfortable with staying in a world where independent and non-manipulatable leaders exist. Earlier, the West used to implement economic sanctions, diplomatic isolation, or political pressure aimed at destabilizing the non-Western leader's position or government. In more extreme cases, military interventions, covert operations, or support for opposition movements may be utilized to remove the leader from power. Examples such as the removal of Saddam Hussein in Iraq, the assassination of Thomas Sankara in Burkina Faso, 
and the expulsion of Muammar Gaddafi in Libya are fresh in the history books. These interventions have often led to prolonged instability, conflict, and humanitarian crises in the affected regions. They also hindered the development and self-determination of these nations, perpetuating a cycle of violence and political upheaval that continues to impact these regions to this day. But Ibrahim Traoré is becoming the man who will teach the West how to be comfortable with a leader who does not follow Western orders. He can teach the West how to handle the stress when an African leader establishes strong connections and fosters a robust network with influential, non-Western figures like Vladimir Putin and Kim Jong-un. Habits are indeed hard to change, but Ibrahim Traoré can definitely help the West in this. Throughout history, the balance of power has largely been shaped by the influence wielded by Western nations, particularly in shaping the global economic and political landscape. However, the emergence of influential non-Western powers such as Russia and North Korea has introduced a new dimension to the global power structure, opening up possibilities for alliances that can potentially contest Western supremacy. In this scenario, the successful establishment and maintenance of solid ties with powerful non-Western leaders can offer Burkina Faso strategic and diplomatic leverage on the world stage. By forming alliances with notable figures like Putin and Kim Jong-un, Captain Ibrahim Traore can tap into alternative networks of political and economic support, creating a counterbalance to Western influence and authority. This diversification of partnerships not only enhances his geopolitical stature, but also fortifies the nation's ability to negotiate and pursue independent foreign policies that may diverge from Western interests. Additionally, partnering with influential non-Western leaders can provide access to resources, technological advancements, and military backing that may not be readily accessible through conventional Western channels. This increased access can bolster Burkina Faso's economic progress, technological growth, and national security. Consequently, decreasing dependence on Western aid and potentially reducing Western influence within the region. Gradually, Captain Ibrahim Traore is becoming a leader for whom his powerful friends like Putin and Kim Jong-un would come without thinking twice. If any Western countries tried to overthrow or assassinate Traore, it would have to face Putin and Kim Jong-un first. That's the reason the Western countries are feeling to be pushed to corners as now, they have no influence left in Burkina Faso. Not only that, but little can they do to overthrow Ibrahim Traore. If they do anything against him, it will trigger a response from the non-West countries that have deep ties with Burkina Faso's young president. Now you can understand how genius Ibrahim Traore is and how he is challenging the Western powers. What do you think? Will Captain Ibrahim Traore be able to create a circle of powerful friends in the non-West world? Does not his friendship with Vladimir Putin and possible closer cooperation with North Korea's Kim Jong-un prove he is the most powerful African leader? Let us know what you think about Captain Ibrahim Traore in the comment section right below. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about. The black culture, civilization, history and evidence about how glorious blacks have been. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.